With Nintendo's NES Mini reminding the world about classic gaming, it would be very nice to try that out for yourself, but who's going to buy an NES Mini these days? They're still hard to come by. Would it be nice to set one up on your own computer? And you can with RetroPie. Now ideally you need a Raspberry Pi for installing RetroPie, but you can install one on an x86 main system. This is a demonstration of what you get with RetroPie. So we have a graphical user interface front end called Emulation Station, which launches games on a RetroArch emulator. I'm expecting performance to look terrible because I'm in a virtual machine, but whatever. It appears to be functional. Oh yeah, not very good at all, but actually I'd say that's about on par with uh, playing on the Raspberry Pi. Or well, certainly the Model 2 Raspberry Pi anyway. So yeah, on a proper computer that would look better. So let's start and select to get out of the game. Should be start and select to get out of the game. It's not working this time. Oh, there it goes. Third time lucky. RetroArch requires Ubuntu 16.04 or one of its derivatives. There's a link on the top right hand side on how to install Ubuntu to dual boot with Windows 10. I'm going to run through this wiki page and there will be a link to that in the video description. The first step is already done, so I'm going to jump straight on to sudo apt get install git and dialog. And then clone a copy of the setup script. And then cd retropy setup, change directory into retropy setup. And then run the retropy script, so sudo dot slash retropy underscore setup dot sh. It gives you an example of what the screen will look like. Yes, it will look something like that when it runs. Come on, hurry up. Okay, very nice. No copyrighted games are included in RetroPie. So I just wants the basic install. This will install all packages from core and main package sections. OK. And this will take quite a while, so I recommend you get a drink or two. Now to get some games. Well, I can imagine people asking me where to download games from. Um, let's say that there might be a good clue if you're at Google Hyperspin Project. Maybe you will find a torrent of it. I'm sorry, I cannot be more specific than that due to uh, YouTube's copyright issues. Wherever you manage to acquire your games from, you can go into the RetroPie folder in, under your home folder, into the ROMs, and place them into the respective system. Let's grab a few Mega Drive games and a few Super Nintendo games. Uh, where is it? SNES. There we go. Paste. I'm going to need a joystick, so I'll plug in this uh, official Sony PlayStation controller or Sysme Power Company. Yeah. The Sysme PlayStation 3 controller. Yeah, right. And we are looking for RetroPie. I can drag that out, pop that there. If you would like it to be an auto start item, do a search for startup applications. Add a new one and give it the following details. So just give it any name you want, the command emulation station, and any comment you want. Although I will point out when I tried this, emulation station started but would not run the games properly. I don't know why. It may be because I was running in VirtualBox. I don't know. Upon the first run of emulation station, we have to set up a controller. So one gamepad detected, hold the button on your device to configure it. The Sony PlayStation 3 controller. So D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y. This is like uh, an Xbox 360 controller, isn't it? So left shoulder, L1, R1, left, right, and we are done. Ooh, some fancy artwork here. Very nice, very nice. Let's go to this RetroPie folder first with the A button to select the item. The RetroPie folder contains the configuration options for Emulation Station and RetroArch. So RetroArch is the backend emulators, which has quite a few emulators on here. And Re Emulation Station is the front end that you are looking at here. Interesting option we have here is the ES themes. We can download new themes for your system. And interestingly, the joypad works on this screen. Oh, looks like the B button downloads. 
<laughs> well, that's useful. So let's grab another one, Luminous. Okay, go across to Cancel. Now if I press Start, UI Settings, and go down to Themes, you can choose a different theme. So back, and back again. Uh, there you go. Ooh, fancy. Very nice. Oh, that's the American Super Nintendo. I don't recognise it looking like that. The European model looks completely different. One final setting I'll go through here is if you go into the main menu, so start, into scraper, so A, and then you can go into scrape now. Start. If it is not quite sure on the scraping, it will ask you, so I think it's that, I can't remember now. Itchy and Scratchy is most certainly not Terminator 2. No. I don't know what it is for this one, so I should just go down to Skip. Krusty Super Funhouse? Yes. Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, <laughs> I think you'd be able to get that one. So, eight games successfully scraped, one skipped. So, if I go into the Mega Drive folder, there should also be more information displayed here, but I think it might be an issue with the theme that it is not showing it. So, so changing the theme, it does display more information about the game. As you can see under the Super Nintendo category, I have not scraped the games here, and it doesn't show any extra information about them. That was a look at RetroPie x86. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.